Welcome to the Paul Chandler Show, everyone. I'm your host, Paul Chandler. In tonight's episode, we're going to be using the Padzilla again, and we're going to be looking at an animation video of the craniotomy and craniotomy being performed. Now, previously on an episode of the show, we saw how those were coded, so tonight we're going to be looking at the procedure actually being done, but don't worry, it's not a live action video, it's an animation video of the craniotomy and craniectomy, so that way as far as coders and auditors, we can actually see what the doctor did while they're doing the procedure, while we read it either on a computer screen or on paper, while we're either doing the coding or the auditing. So stay tuned and we'll, we'll be right back looking at an, a live animation video of the craniotomy, craniectomy surgical procedure using the Padzilla. Welcome back everyone to the Paul Chandler Show. And tonight we're using the Padzilla and we'll be looking at an animated video of the craniotomy and the craniectomy procedure being performed. So while this procedure is going on, I'll be explaining it. So that way then, as far as coders and auditors, we can be able to translate what's going on. Now, we're also gonna be looking at some anatomy dealing with the skull as well, because we have the brain and most people do have the brain, but of course it depends on when you're talking to someone Sometimes you're like, is there any, hello, hello, knock, knock, is anything at home? Uh, but trust me, every human does have a brain inside. Underneath their skull, there are several different parts between the skull and the brain. First of all, example, we have three layers of meninges. And those different layers do include the top layer, the dura matter, and the middle layer, the arachnoid matter. And then at the bottom layer, we have the apia matter. Now, just besides those three different layers of the matter, M-A-T-E-R, we have the subarachnoid space, that's between the second and the third layer, and we have multiple different blood vessels, as well as the serospinal fluid between the different layers of matter for support there. Connecting them all together, we do have the bridge vein going from the brain out the top layer of matter as well. Now, we also have several of the cerebral arteries that go through the brain that supplies blood to the brain itself to help keep it functioning. Now then, with uh, several different parts of the brain, so we have the four different lobes. Outside the four different lobes is the cerebrospinal fluid. So then the cerebrospinal fluid helps connect and keep the brain together between the brain tissue and also helps us to have the normal intracranial pressure. So that we then, during that normal pressure, nothing is going wrong. However, though, there's several reasons why we may have increased pressure between brain tumors, head injuries, blood vessel problems, and brain or spinal cord infections. So then when that occurs, sometimes then we need to go into the brain because all this increases cranial pressure. Next thing you know, we have a swelling of the brain. So the brain swells up and starts hitting against our skull. So in the increase in cranial pressure, for example, here we just saw the brain swell up and next thing you know, we can result in a brain injury. Now, a craniotomy, again, otomy, so it's a temporary incision, may be done to remove abnormal brain tissue, such as a brain tumor that may develop. If the doctor needs to take a sample of the brain itself for biopsy, to remove a blood clot, which we also know as a hematoma, and to also remove the excess cerebral spinal fluid if there is any in the patient. And also pus from an infection, such as an abscess, that is either inside the brain or between the skull and the brain itself. And the craniotomy may also be done to relieve brain swelling and to stop the bleeding, which in this case is known as a hemorrhage, and to repair any blood vessels that need to occur and possible to repair any, any skull fractures, as well as any repair of any meninges that may have developed an injury during some type of process. Now, craniotomy may be done to treat brain conditions, such as the patient has epilepsy, that can help resolve the condition, to help deliver medications directly to the patient's brain itself and to implant some type of medical or some type of monitoring device done as a craniotomy or craniectomies. Now in this case, here we have a brain tumor, which yes, if you like uh, peas or green beans, for example, or cooked beans, sorry, kind of looks like it. But before the procedure itself, patient is going to be given general anesthesia because trust me, you want to be asleep during this. 
the area where the tumor is over the head will be shaved. In this case, then the provider will cut open the skin. And now then we have the skull during the craniotomy. The doctor will, depending on the size, for example, make three holes and then make a dotted path along that they'll do the incision around and remove that bone flap. So then now at this point, it kind of does look like white icing, yes, but that's also known as the dura matter. The patient have the dura matter removed and now the tumor is exposed. Then the tumor will be excised out. The dura matter will be closed up and then be sutured up. And if it's a craniotomy, a temporary incision, then the skull will be placed back and have a few metal plates placed around to secure the bone flat back to where it is. And those plates will be there for the rest of the patient's life. Now, the difference though with craniectomy with the excision is that the provider has the bone excised, but in this case though, the patient's experiencing swelling. So then with the bone flap there, to be able to decrease the swelling, after we have the incisions for the dura matter, then it'll be, the bone flap will be removed for a while while the swelling goes down, and then the bone flap will be returned, and then the sutures will be placed around the skin as well. A head wrap will also generally be placed around the head so that way you'll secure the location where the sutures were placed. Now though, like I said, with the craniectomy, so it's an excision, now then to finish it up, they have to do the cranioplasty, the repair. So that's where then now the swelling has gone down, they suture up the dura mater, the skull that was removed before is placed back with the metal plates around, and the sutures are placed around the skin as well. Now then after the surgery, you're gonna stay in the hospital for a few days because trust me, you're not gonna go home. Just in case something goes wrong, you'll be there. While you're in the hospital, they will check for brain functionality to make sure that you're either returned to normal or if that was not possible, if they knew that before the surgery, if the brain is returned to its normal functions as if they were expecting to. So that's how the craniotomy and craniectomy procedures are being performed. And as far as coders and auditors, hope you enjoyed that. So then when we're looking at the documentation, we can link together what the doctor did and what we're seeing in the documentation. And don't forget to check out the website for our new company, the Specialty Coder Institute. The website is specialtycoder.com, where on October 1st, we launched a new crediting organization where unlike others, all of our exams are all fill in the blank and passing to the 90%. Unlike other organizations where passing is a 70%, with a C minus D plus, it's all multiple choice. So you're being examined on not how real world coding is done. So we upped the bar with our specialty organization as far as the credentialing exams. So check it out at specialtycoder.com. I do thank you for watching this episode of the Paul Chandler Show and have an awesome rest of your night.